In this video, I want to talk about how to use Rust from Python. Now, the video will be composed of several parts. First, we will make a Rust library and then we will set up uh, some code in Python that lets us call the library. Uh, and then finally, we'll test it. And I'll put timestamps in the description so you can jump to the section that's most relevant for you. Now, to begin with, we want to make a Rust library crate and we simply do it like this and I will call it Rust lib. Now it's created a Rust library crate and you can see here is the, uh, the XAML and the source uh, folder. The source just has a, a lib file uh, and there's some um, dummy code in here. The first thing we want to do is to edit the cargo.tumble file so that uh, it compiles to the right type of library. So we, first we can give it a name and, and let's call it the uh, Rusty Python. And the most important thing is the crate type, which has to be a, a C dynamic library. The next thing we want to do is write the actual library functions and I've gone ahead and written two examples here. It's not so important what they do. It's more that uh, we have a function that takes in uh, a slice of data, of mutable data, and uh, changes it. So in this case, it's simply taking in some data and adding a number to each element of the array. Uh, the second function is returning a type. And uh, uh, the way it does it is it again takes in some data just for uh, for fun and then it uh, constructs some values using that data and again it's not so important exactly what it's doing just that it's doing some uh, something non-trivial and uh, returning a user-defined type now that we have the library functions it's time to write the foreign function interface the ffi and the way you do that is you uh, declare these functions uh, with the extern C um, modifier and you also need the macro no mangle so the compiler doesn't change the name of the function and in the function input it's uh, recommended that you use uh, the types from the std ffi module so that it's uh, platform independent and the structure of these functions will usually be something like this, where you take the, uh, so to speak, raw data coming from the FFI uh, call and turn it into uh, a safe type. So here I'm taking the data and turning it into a slice. And then I am calling my, uh, my safe Rust function with this uh, slice. And uh, the other function that returns a specific type, we need to make sure that we, we have a corresponding uh, type that's laid out in the, uh, in the correct way. And that's what this macro uh, repr c uh, does. And this function also needs the macro no mangle. And you can see here in this FFI result type, I again use the, the types from the FFI uh, module. And I follow the same sort of pattern. I, I, de oops, I declare a, a extern C function and I have these, uh, so to speak, raw types in the signature. And I start by turning those into, uh, into safer types. Now, when I want to return some data, through an FFI. It's important that you um, make sure the borrow checker doesn't free them. So first I make the result here and then I just uh, unpack the values for clarity. I need to turn this, uh, if you recall here, the result type is a vector, has a vector of values. I need to turn that into a pointer as here and a count of values. Uh, and I do this simply by calling as mutable pointer and then I take the length and cast it to a C integer. 
And now the important part about the border checker is to call forget on the values so they are not freed um, uh, when you exit this scope. And then I simply return this FFI result type. Um, and that's basically the Rust uh, library done. Now we simply need to, uh, to build it and, uh, and then perhaps move it somewhere. So now let's start by uh, building it. I go build. And now if we look inside target and debug, uh, you can see that here we have our shared library file. Uh, which will have a lib at, on the front and then we'll have whatever name you gave it in the cargo.toml and then .so and this is the file uh, that we want to uh, link with from Python so uh, we might want to move it to a, a better position so I will move it one up um, and now we're ready to write the Python part now the Python FFI relies on this uh, library or module called C types, which is part of the standard library of Python, so you don't have to install anything. And we will use these different uh, types and functions from, uh, from the C types in this example. So the first thing is to load the library file. And uh, right now it's in the same folder that this uh, script is in, so I simply uh, load it like this. And then uh, you have to set up the input types of the functions in the library uh, so it knows how to call them. And uh, you basically cross-reference with your Rust code. And uh, this FFI add x, it took a pointer to a double, uh, an integer and another double. And the make result uh, took as input a pointer to a double and an integer. The make result also returns a type and we need to define uh, how that uh, how the how the data in that uh, return type is laid out. And you do that by defining a class that inherits from this structure class that is also defined in C types. And the most the, the important the most important thing is this underscore fields underscore a field or attribute which should which, which should contain um, the fields you have defined in your Rust code in the same order as they are defined in the Rust code. It's not important what the names are, only that the order and the types is correct. So, for example, we had a double and then we had a pointer and then we had an integer. So it's very important that we have the double, the pointer and the integer uh, in this order uh, here in the, on the Python side. If we somehow mix them up, then uh, the result will be uh, gibberish and or quite possibly give you a segmentation fault. I also have this helper function, which will be good later, that uh, just lets us look into uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, type. And then uh, once you have defined the return type, you uh, set this rest type attribute on the library function. So now that we have loaded the library and defined the types and the result type, we're ready to test it. And I'm going to use NumPy to test it because uh, you usually use NumPy when you have to do numerically heavy uh, calculations and really it, uh, it makes the most sense to use something like Rust if you have something that is numerically heavy. So first I define here a test array consisting of the values 1, 2 and 3 and it's quite important to be aware of which uh, types you're using. So since we have these uh, Rust library functions that take in doubles, we should also use the double type here, otherwise you will run into trouble. And the first thing I do is just to print it uh, to see how it looks before. And then I need uh, a pointer to the data, the, how many data elements there are, and the value I want to add to the data so I can use my uh, my add x function. To get a pointer to the data, you use this uh, C types uh, attribute that is uh, built into an umpire array. And then you say data as a pointer to a C double. Once you have that, you can call the library function, the 
and um, uh, with your pointer with the number of elements and the value you want to add then I, I also just print it after after to check that the value is correct and uh, finally we want to test the make result function I uh, reuse the data pointer from before uh, so we just reuse the same data uh, and it has the same number of elements then we get a result object which is this result object we defined above I print it just to check and uh, the values field will be a pointer to some data which is not uh, really so useful all the time uh, you would probably want to convert it back to a numpy array so that's what I do on this final line or say, uh, penultimate line uh, I use the C types lib module inside numpy and I call the as array function that takes the pointer and then the shape of the data and it's of course important that uh, this shape corresponds to the same number of elements that that's actually in, uh, allocated for the pointer otherwise you will get a memory error so let's now check that this uh, script works and uh, before a starts out being one two three then we call the function add x with the value 2 then it becomes 3, 4, 5 which is correct then we make a result uh, it has some x value that's 12 which in the Rust code you might recall we called value 1 and here it's called x and that's because the names don't really matter they don't have to be the same in Rust and in Python uh, only the types have to be the same the values you can see here is some kind of weird uh, type uh, lp underscore c underscore double that's a long pointer to a c double is what that means and n is 2 meaning that this val this pointer points to two, uh, uh, two data elements and finally I convert the array to a numpy array and uh, you can see here the values are apparently 7 and 5 so that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments.